Welcome to Cashflow Diary, a podcast where we discuss business, money, real estate, and the sharing economy. As a full-time real estate investor, entrepreneur, and all-around problem solver, I have had the privilege of developing individuals into powerful business owners. And today, the focus turns towards you. Our mission is to help you build your real estate empire by leveraging strategies to grow yourself, your mind, and your wallet. Let's get started. We're going to be talking about what can be one of the most expensive pieces of getting your short-term rental business started, i.e. your furnishings. Where do you get them? Do you rent them? Do you lease them? When does it make sense to do which or the other or both? So when it comes to, so you've got a number of decisions when it comes to how you're going to acquire your furniture. What I do, uh, I let my designer make all of those choices. I honestly don't care. I care that it's durable. I care that it comes with a warranty. I care that if it breaks, I can call her and get it replaced. Uh, all of those things are kind of like packaged and included. And that's what's important to me because when the furniture breaks down or like we had a bed break, six days ago and I just made one call it got done it's like well, I, I didn't even make a phone call it was just a Facebook message hey bed broke it here boom guy goes fixes it done hopefully that makes sense uh, that's how I choose that's how I prefer to operate what does that mean I might pay more for my furniture up front for the lower total cost of ownership and operations later that's how I've always operated uh, that but that's me that's my comfort zone you may want more control. So what does that mean? You may go so far as to get a wholesale furniture resale license. Great, but now you're gonna have to commit. You're committing and trying to prove to the furniture outlets that you're getting a certain amount of furniture, making all that work to justify the discount. I'm not saying you can't do it, because we definitely buy enough stuff around these parts. So um, the other thing is if, if you're, so I'll let Rebecca uh, add more about the wholesale furniture license, because I, I know that's the route that they went. Um, and then after that, it's, and this is probably my new favorite way, is uh, leasing, but leasing to purchase, because there are lots of things that you get to do. There are many benefits that I like about it. Chief among them is you can take a limited budget and spread it across more units. That's really, really important. But also, and I think equally important, is that if you are making design choices that you later find out were not really good, like we used to have glass coffee tables because they look great but they don't work so well. <laughs> They're definitely not good and functional or the glass dining room table, also not very functional, but getting being able to get that switched out because you leased the furniture from say a court or a company like Furnish, or Furnish I believe is the other one uh, that I know that we've used successfully. Uh, being able to switch that out before, so you get to test it, it gets to sit in your unit, you switch it out, and then you can do the buy, take advantage of the buyout clauses that they have. That has also been very advantageous for operators as well. Now, let me pull up Rebecca real fast so she can, there you go. You said uh, you wanted to add some more about the wholesale furniture. Like yeah, I was gonna say, actually, um, we got our a wholesale furniture license like way back in the beginning um, because we knew we were gonna grow the company and it's actually not that hard to reach the minimums. I think we reached their minimums with two or three units, to be honest. Okay. Um, and I maybe even one for some of them. Um, so they're, if you know you're gonna grow as a company, it's a, it's a good route to take. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that, but you do have to, it's not hard to get your resale license it's more difficult or more challenging to convince the companies that you are the right company for them to resell to. Yeah. Um, so you have to prove to them because they don't understand short-term rentals necessarily. Um, so you have to prove to them that you're going to be able to buy enough you know, furniture from them. Um, and we were able to do that very easily. Like I said, the, their thresholds aren't as big as you would think. Um, also, we are testing out a rental model right now for the 21 units we picked up just to kind of do, just for fun, to be honest, um, to do a cost comparison thing um, that we're gonna be showing people like, this is how much it cost us to set up these units with renting it. This is how much upfront compared to this is how much upfront when we're purchasing them wholesale. I never purchased any um, furniture retail really um, outside of maybe 
a desk or a coffee table like randomly. But uh, I mean, we've done it a couple ways. Let me take that back. We've garage sailed. We've done it wholesale um, with the furniture license. We're renting furniture, um, but we never paid retail, I guess. Um, and so I have, I'll have more to share on that once we kind of finish our video series on us setting up these units. Um, so we could show you the cost breakdown of how doable it can be. Um, but I think you can pick up the four units um, with one, at least one of those models. And I do like Jay's way of, of doing the, um, the rent to own type thing. The only problem with that is it's not always good looking furniture. Oh no. Oh, it's, it's, it's hit and miss for sure <laughs> yeah, so, yeah you in um, fact i've seen it where you like it looked good in the showroom and then you got it to the apartment you're like oh god that's the wrong couch <laughs> so yeah and it's 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 a thing but and when you're asking about furniture there are many ways of attacking the problem because um, yeah. you need it at the end of the day that you need it at the end of the day yes you do <laughs> Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, I definitely appreciate the time that you guys give me uh, so consistently. And hopefully you find it of value. Tell your friends, you know, hey, you're not going to believe what I get to do on Tuesdays. Um, but we're here to help because uh, at the end of the day, we want you guys to go out there, become bigger, better, better and uh, make more revenue happen. Because I know once you do, you'll be able uh, to do the things that actually matter to you. And that's what I get excited about. Thank you for tuning in to the Cashflow Diary Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave a rating and a review. If you'd like to keep the conversation going, head over to CashflowDiary.com to sign up for our email list, as well as check out all the links and resources in the show notes. Thank you again. Until next time.